are at a 10K here in Toronto this morning, and it was sunny. The rain has started to fall, so the roof closed again for the series finale here at Rogers Center. Got the pink unis today. Oh my gosh, it's always something with that guy. God. Uh, they're bonding. I guess so. If, if there was a ghost in Tampa, it definitely visited his room, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, Why yeah. he was the one that had the ghost story for us. Here's Dave Roberts' lineup. Utley, Seeger, Turner, Gonzalez, same first four on the lineup again. Yasmani Grandal hits fifth. With Yasiel Puig getting the day off, and that means Grace Thompson gets a start in right field. You notice Howie Kendrick making the start at first base with Adrian Gonzalez doing the DHing this afternoon. And the Dodgers try to get a series win against Marco Estrada, 32 years old, born in Mexico, but he grew up in Southern California. Moved to Silmar when he was six. He's been pretty good so far. The numbers sharp, and especially his last time out against the Rangers Tuesday, just one run on two hits over six innings. And the reason for that one and two record doesn't get very much run support so far in early in this season. But he's going to come at you with a about four pitch arsenal. He's got a fastball. A cutter, a changeup, and a curveball. None of them overpowering. His fastball hovers around the low 90s, but all the pitches really good. He uses them all at any time. Very unpredictable. So you're going to definitely have to have your chess game on and battle him. You know what? The 212 batting average against, he's been so much under the radar, I think, as far as a high quality pitcher. Last year, he actually pitched out of the bullpen and then finally got into the rotation and now this year he's not leaving the rotation because last year batting average against led the American League 203 so this guy is sneaky dominant. He's not sneaky. No nothing <laughs> sneaky about his approach. <laughs> sneaky cool shades though those pink ones. Jay Zotley. See it's not just the pink trim on the uniforms but it's pink gloves it's pink shoes for some of the guys and it's pink bats off we go with a series finale and strike one from Estrada pink uh, mask on the umpire yep. too yep. Got wristbands on see some flowers on the arm sleeves oh yeah that sleeve that is something Hard hit on the ground is second. Goins has it for the first out. Closed captioning for today's broadcast is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Marco Estrada now facing Corey Seeger. Corey yesterday, two for three with a walk. He had two hits in his previous 18 at bats, so it's good to see him break out some. Swings through it, strike one. Four hits, four walks on the road trip. How many people back home are adjusting their television? Trying to yeah. figure out, okay, is my television off? No. That's it's pink. Here's Estrada's 0-2 and Seeger cues it back to the mound. Two up, two down for Estrada. Well, the Blue Jays right at 500 right now, 16 and 16. They're tied for third in the American League East. The loss yesterday to the Dodgers snapped a season best four game winning streak for Toronto and John Gibbons. Reigning division champions. Been somewhat of a disappointing start in a year where they had such high expectations. But still right there within two and a half games of first in the East. Justin Turner hit his first home run of the season last night. It was a moonshot into the second deck in left field. One of two long balls for the Dodgers yesterday with Jack Peterson hitting the other. Comes in 0 1. Turner takes it in the dirt. One ball, one strike. You start to feel more confident about the Dodger offense when Adrian Gonzalez gets going and Justin Turner gets going. Got 
Got in on his hands. Turner flexed it to right. Bautista completes a one, two, three first inning for Marco Estrada. Ross Stripling takes the ball for the Dodgers in a scoreless game when you come back. of the first inning and Ross Stripling ready to face this lineup for the Blue Jays right now a disappointing 20th in Major League Baseball in runs per game after they were one of the best offenses statistically in Major League history last year and this platoon at the top continues Saunders hits lead off that moves Pilar back down the bottom half of the order Donaldson Bautista and Carnacion so good two through four. Tulowitzki, the former Colorado Rocky, hitting six. Ross Stripling, 26 years of age, making his sixth start today, but he's doing it on more than a week's rest. His last time out was last Saturday against San Diego when he gave up five runs over four and two thirds in his second consecutive loss. Here's Saunders. One for three yesterday, one hit in the series so far. Strike one or ball one from Stripling. That was close, and that's good though. He's out there in his lane. That's the thing that he's really been struggling with, is getting the ball to one corner or the other a little bit more halves of the plate lately as he's been getting hit. And that pitch is the equalizer, especially for right handers. Ross has reverse splits so far in the big leagues where the right handers are actually hitting higher than the left handers by a significant amount almost 90 points. He came to us we thought he would have a better curveball than changeup but the changeup has really come fast and the curveball at times has been outstanding but he has hung a few. And he strikes out Saunders to begin his afternoon. I'm curious to see about the formula that Ross Stripling has. And I say formula because we were talking about how Clayton Kershaw was talking about the formula to win from this team. But I was also impressed with Clayton's formula to get these batters out. The way he went the first time through the lineup, and especially these big right handed hitters, attacking them in and not giving in. And then later on, that second or third time, showing them something different, going off the plate, really expanded the plate on the big hitters. And that 6 2 win, series evening win yesterday. Josh Donaldson looks at a strike from Stripling. It was Kershaw's third consecutive game where he's had 10 strikeouts and no walks. It's the second time in his career he's done that. Only two guys have done it in baseball history. Chris Archer in Tampa Bay, the other. He did it last July. And it's the fourth consecutive 10 strikeout game period, regardless of walks. First Dodger to have four consecutive 10K games since Hideo Nomo in 1995. Before that, the last guy to do it, Sandy Koufax, who did it five times. 
He is such a stabilizer to this team that you look forward to his starts to maybe break a losing streak or to continue a dominance and a winning streak. You look forward to him being on the mound and setting a tone for the team and an example of how they go about their business. And it's I marvel at what he's accomplished and what's still in front of him. Dodgers supported him with single runs in the second and the eighth and in the ninth and had that big three spot in the third against R.A. Dickey. 3 1 and Donaldson bangs it in the ground at Turner. Two out. Nice backhand by Justin Turner staying with it and also recognizing Josh Donaldson wasn't really getting hustling out of the box because he knew how hard he hit it and that he had it. So he was seemed to be really taking his time. So Justin Turner took his time to make sure he had a good throw. The hair color kind of clashes with the pink for Justin. <laughs> Two up and two down in this first inning for Ross Stripling. He now faces Jose Bautista. There's two hits in this series a home run and a double. His double against Kershaw yesterday was his hardest hit ball this year. And just barely missed getting out of here off of the wall and left. Stripling delivers 1 0. And that breaking ball snaps into the knees for strike one. Ross can really spin the baseball. I saw that was Stroman. My goodness. He could really spin the baseball when he pitched for Toronto. Two. The way he throws his curveball when it still breaks pretty sharp when he leaves it up. You know. The ones that are down though they seem to have an extra gear the way they finish. Put a little sweep on that one. Instead of the straight 12 to 6 and when you're thinking 12 to 6 think the clock. That one was a little bit more kind of 1 to 7. Two and two Jose Bautista swings through an elevated fastball and a one two three first for Ross Stripling with bookend strikeouts on Saunders and Bautista.
Major League Baseball, of course, is celebrating Mother's Day today, being that it is Mother's Day, but it's also for awareness for breast cancer research. A lot of the players will be asked to assign a lot of the equipment and the stuff that they're using for Mother's Day to be donated to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Of course, around Major League Baseball, a lot of the ceremonial first pitches were thrown out by women either battling breast cancer currently or breast cancer survivors. So happy Mother's Day, but also for a good cause, gentlemen. All right, yeah, it was Jay Happ's mother that threw out the first pitch today for for Toronto and half caught that first pitch. Adrian Gonzalez celebrating his 34th birthday on this Mother's Day looks at ball one. Knocked in a couple of runs yesterday. And surprisingly there were his first RBIs in two weeks. He had that stretch during the homestand where he was 0 for 21 but you'd figure still there'd be one scattered in here and there with where he hits in the order and as productive as he's been consistently his entire career. It's a long stretch to go without knocking a run in. And all it takes is one. That's what you feel like when you're in the big leagues. You're going, are you recognize that there's stretches or you're struggling? Like all I need is to find that hit or all I need is to finally knock that one and hopefully they'll turn things around. Hitters count here on a 3-1. Smack the second and short right field Goins has it. One up. Uh, what I've also noticed, you know, look at this defense. It's a obviously it's a pull defense, but it's not a shift because you don't have the shortstop over there. But you're going to play the second baseman deep in that hole so he can cover some range, just like he did right there. But I think we're going to see more like that off Adrian because he's not afraid to go the other way. He's been showing that to stop, especially when a team shifts. He's not afraid to just use that hole. So I think it's get word starts spreading. So he's going to almost create some more holes for himself because you're not going to see that shift. Now Smiley Grandal looked at his strike. And now the Dodger catcher swings at that change up that Estrada throws more frequently than any pitcher in baseball. Throws that and his four seam fastball and people in the scouts don't rave about the velocities but what they rave about is his vertical movement. Two of the largest vertical movements in the big leagues and so we're not even talking about a curveball. We're talking about his fastball and his changeup. One is over 10 inches of movement and one is just under 10 inches of movement. Grandall on the ground again at a short right field goings there again. And the positioning defensively for the Blue Jays all series long has been spot on two away. There's your shift that we talked about. And the other thing too is being on turf. It feels like it allows you to go even deeper out there and get more of a range because the ball is going to get to you a little bit quicker. And also you don't really have to worry about maybe some of the lip of the grass or the grass playing different. It's pretty consistent. Howie Kendrick. Making the start at first base today. Dave Roberts had said yesterday that it would be. Either Justin Turner or Chase Utley, he thought. Now with Adrian Gonzalez getting the day off from first and DH, and it's Kendrick making his first start there this year. He is starting to look like the old Howie. The bat's coming through the zone with more velocity. He looks more balanced. He doesn't look lost. Marco Estrada talked about it not being overpowering but there are some guys where a ball just seems to get on you whether, whether it's deception or whether the way it comes out of his hand and he's one of them. So that fastball maybe 91 92 miles an hour but sometimes it can seem like it's 95 96 and then you mix in that change up that looks just like his fastball and the bottom files out of it. And six up and six down for him today. That's his first punch out. Onto the bottom of the second and no score.
great a weekend, not just in this city, but in this ballpark. Yeah. Great environment. Uh, the roof closed, but that's made it particularly loud. Really the easy to grade, which is the better dome. <laughs> <laughs> Tampa Bay right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you put 30,000 more people in it. One, two, three, first inning for Ross Stripling. Edwin Encarnacion leads off the second by looking at ball one. And yeah, the fan support here has been great. Mm -hmm. Incredible. It wasn't always like this here mm -hmm. in Toronto. I remember when I was playing it, it would feel occasionally like the way Tampa was. There were some nights where they wouldn't get 10,000 people. Ha! And now you saw, saw over this series the consistency of 30,000 plus. Well, 40. Tampa yeah. was like 10, 11, 12 in yep. that area. And now been over 40 both days so far and I'm sure today way over that and of course the years you were coming here in Omar were the down years they had those back to back World Series titles in the early 90s but then a 22 year postseason drought before winning the East last year and going to the American League Championship Series two and two on Encarnacion and it's interesting because they the teams they may not have won, but they had some great players on their team. Carlos Delgado, Sean Green, you had Roy Halladay, you had some pitchers. I mean, you had pieces. And Carnacion leading off the second, running the count full against Stripling. Texas native former Texas A&M Aggie walked down there turned into a star for Texas A&M once fouled hard off of the mask of Grand Dahl and it stays three and two. We've seen just about every catcher on this trip get beat up. Yeah. It's ridiculous the pounding they take. Comes another payoff. Hit in the air, deep left center field. Back on it goes Crawford at the track. He's got room for the first out of the second. Must have just got in on him a little bit because the swing and the sound as it left the bat, I was like, whoa. A little closer to the label than Encarnacion wanted. Stripling enjoyed the fact that he got in there a little bit. That was supposed to be a way down and away and that came up came up in the end so definitely missed the spot and he's looking at it hoping it is it going to stay in and it does. So he's retired the first four men that he's faced and now Justin smoke. Who knows a little bit about Stripling's home state having been drafted by the Texas Rangers former highly touted prospect there. It was dealt to the Mariners as the key piece in the Cliff Lee deal. And now here in Toronto. We're putting together a good stretch shooting above 400 on this homestand. Nothing in two. It's in a more significant role smoke is with a suspension of Chris Calabello. 80 games for the band substance. And so what was a platoon where he just faced right handed pitching is now turned into an everyday role. Just inside and it's two and two. I'm just thinking the amount of boxes that were been delivered today to all the clubhouses with all the from the pink shoes, the pink sleeves, there's even pink tape yeah. on some of the I mean all the different boxes. Pink bats. Open, yep. All the batteries they had to bring in too to light these things up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here are the wristbands on Chad Fairchild, the home plate umpire, to go along with that pink mask. 3 2 to Justin Smoke is caught on and miss, and that's already three K's for Ross Stripling. 
The street leading up to Dodger Stadium, as you know by now, has officially Vin Scully Avenue. Come to the Dodger game on Tuesday and get a Vin Scully Avenue t-shirt, courtesy of the Mercedes-Benz dealers of Southern California. The tickets go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. That'll be game two of a four-game set with the Mets. Start of a nine-game homestand. Four with New York, three with St. Louis, two with the Angels. And then the ensuing road trip, they stay in Southern California going to at uh, the Angels and three in San Diego. Strike one on Troy Tulowitzki. And now Stripling back downhill with strike two. Just watching Troy Tulowitzki hit, we were talking about his struggles. And actually right now, he's doing a better job. They, I was talking to one of his hitting coaches and they were saying that you know usually he's very upright when he hits but when the ball was coming he had a tendency to kind of duck down a little bit then hit as he's ready to drive it rather than staying more upright what he normally did but today he's actually more upright than we saw in the first two games so right here so he's staying up there where we'd see even a little bit more bend in the first couple of games he didn't play in the first game but yesterday against Clayton Kershaw. So for him, he's hoping that translates into more success in being the Troy Tulowitzki that we're all used to seeing. Five-time All-Star in the last six years, hitting just 167 so far and taking strike three on a curve from Stripling. Six up and six down for Ross with four strikeouts. Jack Peterson set to lead off the third inning for the Dodgers. Can he make it back-to-back -back days with a long ball? No score. Ross Stripling already four K's against this great Blue Jays lineup. And now Jock Peterson steps in against Marco Estrada. Who bounces in the first one, one and all. Jock won for four yesterday. How about the sleeves on his forearms today? Very, very colorful. Uh, Is they that are. It? Uh huh. <laughs> Those flowers? They are. Swings it a change up one and one. Can you tell what kind? Are they tulips? I wish you'd hold still. Yeah. yeah. Under Armour tulips. Long home run for him yesterday. It was. His 16th home run in his year plus in the league as a full time player of at least 425 feet.
The only left handed hitter that's hit more during that span is Mike Trout. And in fact during that span he has the longest average distance in the majors two and two. Can you check that you said Mike Trout as a left handed hitter. Oh yeah then that'd be wrong wouldn't That's it definitely wrong. Yeah. I'll have to double check that second part of it is right longest <laughs> home run yep. distance in the majors. Yep. Average wise since his debut is John Carlos Stanton just behind him. Right. First part would be right if Mike Trout was left handed. And he goes after that chain strike three. We talked about Marco Estrada the unpredictable. I mean here's three two count was get challenging with fastballs and then he gives him a beautiful change up. You're anticipating the fastball as a hitter. That's why you can see Jock out in front on that pitch. Start off in the strike zone and just fool. Carl Crawford takes strike one. Mario Soto, Trevor Hoffman. I'm trying to think of the best changeups I've seen. This guy's got one of them. He uses it a lot, throws it about 30% of the time. That's the largest percentage in the majors. And so two to Carl Crawford. Ball one. Estrada came over from the Brewers straight up for Adam Lind. Had a monster season last year. Really broke out of the scene. 13 wins. Had a win in the postseason. And like you mentioned earlier, Oral, the lowest batting average against in the American League. Full count on Crawford. 203. You know, he's very thankful to the Brewers, his time there, because they gave him an opportunity. The organization was always looking for pitching and kind of a, you know, a low market club. So if you did good things, you got a chance. And his stuff does not read from scouts or that you would go, okay, this guy will translate. But this accuracy at 90 miles an hour and that ability to move the ball and then change speeds the way he does with his changeup, you could project him, and the Brewers did. And he's a big leaguer, and now he's a high quality big leaguer. He struck out the last three Dodgers and has retired all eight as he misses upstairs to Trace Thompson making the start in right field today. Double check that note about uh, that, that made Mike Trout a left handed hitter. It's just hitters period. Trout is the only guy with more home runs of 425 feet or longer than Jock Peterson since the start of last season. Even more impressive. Nine up and nine down for Estrada as Thompson flies out to right.
brought to you by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one at your local Dodge dealer today. Happy Mother's Day back here in Toronto. Where Ross Stripling has retired the first six Blue Jays that he's faced and now gets Kevin Pillar. Who's back down in the seven spot today. John Gibbons, the manager for the Blue Jays, has said that yes, it basically at this point is a platoon at leadoff. So Pilar will hit leadoff against left-handed pitching. Michael Saunders, such as today, against righties. Pilar hits a high fly ball to left center. On the move is Crawford. Turns it off as it bounces off the bottom of the wall. Pilar's double, the first base hit of the day for either side, and it leads off this third. Once again, looking at where Yasmani Grandal is set up on the outer half, and that ball creeps over on the inner half. Got away with one before. This time he doesn't, and Pilar makes him pay with a leadoff double. Pilar's third hit of this series. Two long doubles and the game-winning home run on Friday night. Off of Joe Blanton in the eighth inning. Dodgers lost that game 5-2. They won yesterday 6-2. So the series rubber match today as Russell Martin climbs in. 33 year old former Dodger. Takes ball one. He's really struggling this season although lately he started to hit some. 177 overall. And with those struggles decided to shave most of his beard last week left the mustache though. The mustache has been good luck this week. Don't need to tell you because Chad Fairchild did. <laughs> and boy, the acoustics in this place are fantastic. I like that Chad Fairchild did not raise his arms. Most umpires when they're going to go no hits to raise your arms and as a pitcher that startles you and if you're in the wrong part of your delivery you can get hurt. He just he yelled it but he did not raise his arms and make you know Ross flinch. This crew's been pretty good all weekend. I don't remember talking a ton about him which usually means they've been good. Two and one on Martin. You always say. Who are the good umpires when you don't know their names? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chad go Fairchild. About, go about their business, consistent, solid. You don't see a lot of guys complaining a whole lot. They're more maybe talking to them. There's a difference between talking and complaining. And that also says a lot about their personalities and demeanor when they're on the field. Well, it's the crew chief, Jim Joyce. Move the runner over with a bouncer to Kendrick. Stripling steps on the bag, but a productive out for Russell Martin. And so while he doesn't improve on that batting average, it is so much lower than it's ever been. He goes back to the dugout knowing that he got the job done. And that's appreciated by the team. Because they know you're struggling. There's a guy in scoring position. You're thinking, well, here's a way to snap out of my struggles, get a base hit and an RBI. But just getting the job done, high five and for you you have to take that as like as if that's a hit. Let's say you're going 0 for 3 today but you're like you know I, I did my job I'm really 1 for 3 today. Brings up Ryan Goins out of the 9 spot who is 0 for his last 15. And so he'll be looking to do the same thing. Bring that runner home from third whether or not it improves that batting average. So for his last 15 and two for his last 31 starting to lose some playing time at second to Darwin Barney. Bouncing ball diving Kendrick as it comes home and shouldn't have. Pilar scores the game's first run. Kendrick playing his first game there in four seasons would have been a near impossible play to make. 
The Dodgers were playing in on the corner, so you're thinking if the ball's hitting to me, you're coming home originally. Howie makes a nice dive, but maybe once he gets to his knees, maybe a little. Yeah, once you go down, once you go down to your knees, that's when you just got to say, okay, I really don't have a chance. Let me just get up and make sure of the out. Try to keep it from the big inning. And I'll tell you, you also have to give Pilar a lot of credit. He got a great jump over there, was preparing. Once he saw that ball hit the ground, he was off and running, and he had some really good speed. We've seen that in center field. Mm -hmm. Second time through the order now, Michael Saunders. I will tell you, as a pitcher on the mound, I love how he making the attempt. You know, but when you step back, and look at the big picture, maybe you say, you know, we should have just gotten out. Especially with the guys they have coming. Donaldson, Bautista, and Encarnacion to follow Saunders here at the top of the order. Saunders 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Strikeout numbers through the roof for him, which makes him a bit of an oddity in the leadoff spot. She moved into after two weeks this year. Opposite field shot off one bounce. Seeger picks it. Huntley the jump throw wide of the bag. But a nice start to that turn by Seeger to get the second out. Ball was hit hard enough to turn a double play, but Chase had to turn it that way because he had, look how far he's playing from second base. Talk about shifts, we talk about playing pull, really pull, because normally double play depth, even if it's a lefty or righty, you're gonna be closer to second base to be ready for that pivot. But Chase had to go so far to get to second base because you know, obviously the numbers say play farther pull and take away those hits. So the runner at first and two gone. It's Josh Donaldson. Dodgers have done a good job limiting him in this series. He's one for seven after his ground out in the first inning. His nine home runs, second in the American League behind Robinson Cano, who hit two yesterday to take the lead in the American League over Donaldson and Jose Altuve of Houston. How about this? He's gone six games without a home run now. Donaldson doesn't seem noteworthy, except it's his longest drought this year. Six games. That dropping of the front shoulder as he approaches with his swing gives him that really big uppercut for Donaldson. I think the pitch created that uppercut right there but he keeps that short it more that shoulders for him to stay in on the ball that he's not we always talk about getting big and flying open he's trying not to create that when you fly open with that front shoulder then your bat drops you swing you have a tendency to swing under the ball and miss hit it so he really there's certain things that Donaldson does in his you know it in his stance that he really tries to emphasize or maybe sometimes over exaggerate at times so he can stay his back swing can stay consistent. It's on a one two and Stripling cuts it off of the outside edge count evens. Lead off double for Kevin Pilar moved to third on Russell Martin's bounce out and scored on the fielder's choice grounder from Goins. After Saunders bounces into a fielder's choice Donaldson takes upstairs and the count goes full. These are the counts when you know you're playing the Toronto Blue Jays you got a guy like that on deck the guy at the plate longest stretch without a home run six games. You've got to still make a pitcher's pitch. Breaking ball flipped in the air to right for Trace Thompson, who's got it, and the inning is over. And he did make a pitcher's pitch to limit it to just one run here in the third.
Time for our Coors Light Cold Hard Facts with Alana Rizzo. Well, Joe, so far so good for Marco Estrada. Nine up, nine down against the Dodgers in the first three innings. And he really is picking up where he left off last season. You look at the lowest opponent average against. And a lot of names that you might expect. And then there's Marco Estrada, 203 average. Dave Roberts earlier today said you have to be disciplined against him, not predictable. He throws all pitches to both left-handed and right-handed hitters, guys. 32 years old out of Mexico, Alana. Moved to Southern California when he was six years old with his mom. And misses low with the first one to Chase Utley. It is worth noting at this point, I suppose, as he goes into the fourth without a base runner against him, that twice in a row last year he took no hitters into the eighth and lost those no hitters. That was back to back starts where that happened. It was the first time since a another former Jay and Dave Steve did it in 1988. Losing no hitters in the eighth inning or later of back to back starts and Dave Steves were ugly the way he lost them. Mm. bad hop ground balls. It was ridiculous. They both should have been no hitters. Deepest Wait. you went. Uh, seven and two thirds I think you lose lose any cheaply. No, no, uh, uh, Nick Asaski hit a home run off me on a 3 0 <laughs> count. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I don't want to walk him. He's not going to swing and. <laughs> hit a home run tied the game because in a one nothing game they are swinging 3 0. <laughs> I came in and goes I can't believe he's swinging 3 0 He goes, it was one nothing dummy. I'm like you're right. 3 and 1 on Chase Otley leading off the fourth for the Dodgers. I had one that went into the eighth also Tony Gwynn broke up. Oh that guy. Yeah hmm. that guy. No such thing as cheap I, there. I'm sure he broke up a lot. Yeah. Or he just really just ended your dream of a no hitter right away <laughs> the first time he was up. <laughs> I probably looked and saw he was coming up later in the game and said, I'm not going to throw a no hitter. Why concentrate on it? First base runner of the right. day for the Dodgers is Utley Walks. The lead off this fourth inning. Omar, do you have any that stick out where you broke no hitters up real late in the game? Uh, you know, I don't re really recall. Breaking them up or recall uh, doing that late in the game. Not me. I remember almost being no hit and some of my teammates. I remember Carl Everett breaking up one. Cena. Corey Seeger. You typically broke him up in the first inning yourself. <laughs> my favorite no hitter story is the night that I was a Dodger but rehabbing. And I went to the Janet Jackson concert. I've come to the ballpark and rehabbing because it drove me crazy to hang around the ballpark and watch the game. Mm -hmm. And Fernando threw a no hitter that night, and so did Dave Stewart. And I didn't know he threw a no hitter until after the Janet Jackson concert. So the next morning I got up real early and uh, got half a dozen newspapers and got them all framed for him and took them in wow. to give to his family and stuff. Because I felt so bad I wasn't there for it. That was a concert. Yeah, that was my follow up too. Thanks, Nomar. Yep. It was great. Got yeah. to meet her before. Wow. And, and yeah, hang out. So you, weren't, <laughs> and you really weren't that sorry to Fernando then. <laughs> <laughs> it was a gift for really being dedicated to my rehab at the time. And Tommy said, you know, I, I want you just to have a night off. Why don't you come in and then I, you can go home and be with your family. And my wife said, there's a Janet Jackson concert. Let's, let's go. Ah! No so wardrobe right. malfunctions at this one, right? No. At this concert, no. <laughs> Seager bounced back to the mound his first time. You know, the funny thing was when we met Janet Jackson before, uh, Millie Vanilli was there. They're the group. I, I really told them how much I enjoyed their work and their singing and how in tune it was. And they ended up getting busted for lip syncing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that didn't change the fact that you enjoyed it. You just enjoyed what uh, whoever's voices yeah, they were right other than there. theirs. I, mm -hmm. I'll admit I went to that concert. <laughs> I went to one. To Millie Vanilli concert. concert. Yeah. Yeah, first one. That was your first, first concert? concert ever. Milli Vanilli. Yeah. <laughs> mine was. Hey, mine was pretty <laughs> Ricky. I'm really embarrassed to say that. Well, my first concert. I, I was Somebody a, dragged me to it. It was in Lansing near my hometown. Yeah, that was something. Mine was the boss, Bruce Springsteen. Here's Justin Turner. You win. <laughs> yeah. You win. <laughs> 
once went to a Pablo Cruz and Foreigner concert where Pablo Cruz warmed up for Foreigner. These are probably people that Joe doesn't know, though. I know Foreigner. Justin's 0 for 1, fly out to right. Dodgers still looking for their first base hit against Marco Estrada, who walked Utley to start this inning. Turner smacks it in the ground is short. Utley was moving with a pitch and will reach second anyways as it squeaks through the legs of Tulowitzki. So two on with one gone and a chance for the Dodgers to tie this game here in the fourth. It's very rare we were seeing Tulowitzki bobble this ball, and I don't know if he was possibly thinking maybe it was hit hard enough. He knew that Chase Utley was going if he was thinking well maybe I can still possibly get up second base but it was really that last hop the last hop there is the one that came up on him and hit him at the heel of the glove and so Adrian Gonzalez who had a multi RBI game yesterday in that three run inning his first RBI since late April takes ball one. Same mm -hmm. feedback on dirt in this dome as we were getting in Tampa Bay. I, I haven't heard uh, that it's as bad as the one in Tampa Bay as far as from the dirt. I've heard pretty good that they say it's fast but they haven't said that the dirt feels as inconsistent or that second hop coming up on but that you saw that hop go up on Tulo. Was ruled in air by the way. So the Dodgers still looking for their first hit. One ball one strike on Gonzo. Second time he's had the day off at first. The DH in this afternoon and waiting on this one one from Estrada. Here's an interesting fact you're talking about the dirt asking about it the dirt here they say it's one foot deep. As far as the infield dirt compared to in Tampa Bay it's only it's inches. On concrete. So I know they did a lot here. You know, they had, when I played, they had that old kind of astro turf. There wasn't the long blades. There wasn't the infill. It was non-infill type of turf, and it was all the infill. But now, when they created the longer blades, the infills. But they've made a really effort underneath to put dirt, soften it, and make it feel like real grass as close as possible. Gonzalez takes strike three. Didn't like the call from Chad Fairchild. That is five K's for Estrada. And Gonzalez spending some extra time discussing with Chad Fairchild. The K zone has in it at the bottom of the zone or hitting the bottom of the zone, and you can see. Adrian just thought listen it may have started off as a strike or looked that way but he felt like it fell out of the strike zone. And so it's up the Osmani Grandal with two on and two out in the fourth inning. And he takes ball one. Crowded out the second his first time. And a position perfectly with the second baseman goings in that exact spot right there in short right. On a ball that was hit well. Otley at second. Turner at first. Two and all. And yes, Monty Grandall is off to a great start this year. After the offseason shoulder surgery that prevented him from finishing strong last year. It's an all-star during the first half. That average was still up around 300 when he injured his shoulder at Philly in early August. But went on a 6 for 49 skid or a 6 for 94 skid to finish last year while battling through that shoulder. He waits on this 2-1 from Estrada. And looks at strike two.
Estrada starting to look like he has earned the borderline calls from Fairchild behind the plate and hitting the glove so much. Dodgers get their first base runners of the game but strand them at first and second and they still don't have a hit against Estrada through four. This Mother's Day, and then get him a nice gift. Or when I get uh, home. Okay. <laughs> no more. Same. Same. Thing. Good. Thanks for asking that on the air, Joe. Well, I know that Dana is at lunch right now. Uh, probably not with the sound on, so I wasn't necessarily throwing you under the bus. Okay. <laughs> Three, four, and five. For Toronto coming up against Ross Stripling in this fourth inning. Blue Jays only have one base hit. It was a double from Kevin Pilar starting the third. Moved up to third and a bounce out. Scored and a bounce out. Stripling struck out Bautista his first time up and delivers ball one a little bit high. It looked like almost a. Uh, one of the pitches that was called on Adrian Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. I thought Adrian did a nice job after that controversial strike three in his mind to talk to Fairchild about it. And I think Adrian was really griping about the borderline strike away, the borderline high strike, and then finally a borderline low strike. Kind of like you can't give him all those. Two. Boy, I gotta love what Stripling's doing against Bautista here. He's using the whole kitchen sink. He's not saving anything for later in the game. I've got to get these guys out and I'll go as far as I can go. Including up there. Hmm. Yes, Monty asked for it up. And he got it up. He didn't want to make a mistake. That hits the cupboard above the kitchen sink. Yeah. The one you need a chair to get to. Yeah. Those weren't the easiest pitches for me to throw either because I'm concentrating on down 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 with my sinker and then all of a sudden you want a ball up and it's a it's a it's a tough adjustment. Got him to pop up on a breaking ball and I'm just going to make noise until Bautista is out of the range of our microphone so you don't pick up any uh, anything that he has to share on this lovely Sunday afternoon. One gone in the fourth start your Dodger retired number spin series collection on Monday that's tomorrow when the boys in blue. 
take on the Mets and the first giveaway will be Pee Wee Reese first 40,000 fans in attendance at that number one pin Played his entire 16 year career with the Dodgers part of seven National League pennants and the 1955 first World Series title Encarnacion looks at a strike. Oh for one flied to left his first time it is one for nine in this series. Dodgers have done a good job against Donaldson Bautista and Encarnacion through the heart of this order. They've kept the mistakes down and when they've made them these guys haven't put real good swings on them. And like I said they're not saving anything for the next at bat they have been battling them all the time. Going right to three two breaking balls going right to throwing the cutter on both sides of the plate fastballs down fastballs up. Donaldson Bautista and Encarnacion in this series guys four for twenty seven. That's doing a number on them. Here's a 2 2. I think on the road trip now, the Dodgers scored 23 runs and they've given up 21. And we're, we're at 500 now with this one in the balance. Not lost a rubber game this year. 4 0 in series finales with a series tied at 1. Tries to lay off but can on that sharp breaking ball and Stripling has out number two in the fourth on his fifth K. Good job by Ross Stripling to come back with that breaking ball. Making it look like a fastball. Especially the part of the zone. He actually I thought earlier in the at bat when it was one and two didn't get a curveball down in the zone call for a strike. It was a ball it was borderline but it looked like a really good pitch that he didn't call. And then coming back and burying it. To get him to swing. Two up and two down. Justin Smoke. Cuts on it. Strike one. I think Ross Stripling is benefiting from the extra days off that he got. I think he's benefiting from the Blue Jays kind of being on a little hangover from Clayton Kershaw and coming in thinking, oh, well, we get a rookie, you know, not many starts, hasn't got even a big league win. Uh, they look a little overconfident, a little anxious, and he's preying on that. Hangovers in Toronto? No. Nope. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Two balls and a strike now. On smoke. He's hitting above 400 in his last six games. So with the guys two through four in the order haven't been as sharp. He has started to hit well. Pops this one in foul ground and it will get out of play two and two. This is my first Mother's Day without my mom. <laughs> We lost her July 3rd and, uh, last year and uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that don't have their moms that are remembering their moms today too. So great memories to all of those that don't have their moms. And a strikeout of Justin Smoke to finish this fourth inning one two three go the Blue Jays.
It's time for greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Hello, Alana. Hello, Joe. Well, Howie Kendrick certainly has been a man all over the diamond. It's the first start at first base this season, but he has been there before. In fact, 64 other times he has played at first. Of course, Adrian Gonzalez getting the day off defensively. So Dave Roberts was down to a couple of options with Scott Van Slyke being on the shelf and Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Howie Kendrick is the man. Dave Roberts saying that I trust him and he says he's comfortable over there. Yeah, it seems like a lot of he's been pretty comfortable wherever he's gone and he doesn't necessarily look like an outfielder when he's in left but he certainly hasn't hurt the Dodgers at any point out there and his overall versatility has been so important for Dave Roberts for the injuries they've dealt with. Smacks one sharply to Goins who recovers in time to get him for the first out of the fifth. And so still no hits for the Dodgers against Marco Estrada. Through four and a third and a one nothing game and it's Jack Peterson. Who struck out in a change up his first time. And so just to reiterate that note that. I rattled off incorrectly the first time he came up. Jock now has 16 home runs of 425 feet or farther since the beginning of last year. That's number two regardless of handedness in baseball behind Trout who is obviously a right handed hitter. Trout has 18 of that distance. Dear Carlos Stanton is in that group too. Uh huh. He's up there. I would hope. Let's see the one he hit the other day. About 490 feet. Wow. As far as average distance per home run, yeah. Stanton is just behind Peterson. And they're both north of 400. I'm yeah. Sure. Yep. Probably north of 415 or so. Mm, yeah. I think Jock is around 422. Yeah. yeah. So Stanton's right. like 419. Yep. Wow. Pretty good for average. <laughs> <laughs> Tough spot here against a guy who is dialed in. One ball, two strikes, and Estrada fades a change by him. Two gone on strikeout number seven. It's starting to get a little bit interesting at this point. With 30 Estrada locked in. 30% change. Yeah. An approach for 30% change ups would. I mean, you sometimes you got to look for it. Sometimes if a guy who doesn't have an overpowering fastball. You can go up there saying, I'm going to look for that changeup and almost react fastball. Not easy to do. I mean, that's the hardest thing to do, but when the guy's throwing it that much and you know that it's a swing and miss pitch, you can go ahead and look that way. That's why, you know, you see the velocity on that 90. There's more to it than just the fact that it's 92, 91 miles an hour that. It's a type of fastball that seems to get on you a lot quicker than what the radar gun is saying. Because you don't see too many guys necessarily with that approach. And a lot of times you'll see, okay, I'm late on that fastball or I'll foul it off kind of late but still square it up if you're thinking that. So it's with it, it, his deception or whatever it is, you can't think that way and it makes that change up that much better because it is an impressive change up. Aren't there some changeups that are just off speed pitches and then there are others that are almost like optical illusions. Yes. And there's also sliders that look that way too. That some for some reason look like you're going to be able to hit it and you can't keep sweeping away from you. Goins a tough play to finish off five no hit innings from Marco Estrada. On to the bottom half Dodgers down one nothing.
brought to you by Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We treat kids better. And by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. Those pink bats in the background have been good for a whole lot of nothing today for the Dodgers. No hits against Marco Estrada through five. Ross Stripling has been nearly as good. He's allowed just one hit. Troy Tulowitzki swings at the first pitch and fouls it off strike one. The only hit for Toronto came from Kevin Pillar to start the third. It was a double. And he eventually scored on back to back ground outs. Tulowitzki a strikeout victim his first time. And sends a fly ball into right center. Peterson and Thompson converging, and it's Trace Thompson to make Tulowitzki 0 for 2. This time these teams have met up since 2013. And the Dodgers try to win the series rubber match. When they met in 2013, it was during that incredible stretch for the Dodgers and it was on the road trip to open the second half of the season where they won three in Washington and then came up here and swept the Blue Jays. Here's Kevin Pillar who takes outside ball one. There were 47 and 47 when that second half began and the road trip through Washington and Toronto started a 25 and three run. Mm. Went from down nine and a half in the division in one month to leading the division. Pilar with a line drive that hangs up for Jock Peterson. Two out. Well, Kevin Pilar finally knows what it feels like because he does this an awful lot. Line drive to center field. Good job by Jock Peterson. Keeping an eye on it. Rolling with it, making a fine catch. How we look at Carl's cam. Carl's cam. Ross Stripling, just like Oral, appreciates it. Yeah, sure do. You appreciate that great defense behind you. Russell Martin goes after the first one and fouls it off. Strike one. I thought you many appreciated the Carl scam. I meant both. <laughs> <laughs> I want Nomar eating the burgers, and I want to go to Morongo. It is a little backwards considering that. What? Oral's the poker player, I and mean, you're the one that's seemingly taking ownership over the Morongo ah. Casino and Resort uh, camp. Slow mo camp. Yeah. I just thought they were a great sponsor. Why does it matter what, who plays poker or not? There's no disputing they're a great sponsor. I'm with you. Carl's, too. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a $6,000 burger. That was at Mandalay the, Bay. The Palms. The Palms. The Palms with a 24 year old bottle of French Bordeaux. Breaking ball got in on him and Stripling went up the ladder to pull it down. That's back to back one two three innings for Ross. Let's see if the bats can get going to help him out. No hits through five but only down one nothing.
game with the Blue Jays in front, but that's one more run and it's one more hit than Marco Estrada has succumbed to the Dodgers. They're both pitching outstanding and Estrada with the no hitter going and we can talk that all we want when it's against the Dodgers. We actually want to jinx him. <laughs> Jeez, you don't have to be so honest about and, uh, it. <laughs> well, on the other side, I've been told on Twitter, I can't believe you jinxed it. Trace Thompson gets the first crack at breaking it up in the sixth and takes a strike. But you can't have it both ways, so I yeah. don't believe in jinxes. I don't have any idea what's going on down there that we're going to help or hurt with our voices. You know, the whole discussion of it, it's obviously a baseball tradition that you don't talk about it, right? But I think that the big thing with, with us and our jobs is our job is to inform and You'd hate for somebody to tune in and not know what's going on. And I understand the argument that these days you always know what's going on because of social media and the apps and everything. But that doesn't change what any booth in baseball's job is. Well, it really originated with the players telling everyone we don't talk to mm -hmm. him during the game. We don't mention it. We don't sit near him. We leave him alone. And it was all about the pitcher who was accomplishing the feat at yeah. the time. They didn't want to break his zone. Right. But it has grown from that original exposure of this what goes on on the bench to True. the whole world. Right. Can't right. talk can't, about can't it. Can't say it. Don't say it. the broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> and I think there are ways to inform without, you know, making it look like you're literally trying to jinx a guy. 2-2 Two -two to Trace Thompson. It's kind of like the Sports Illustrated cover jinx uh -huh. by the time you get on the cover the guy that was playing well enough to get on the cover usually gets cold by the time they come they cover you as you're in your hot streak you've just won the world championship whatever's gone on by the time the, the magazine is released you're cold <laughs> no more is cold because his shirt was off on the cover no. Thompson sends a high line drive to deep right center field and the no hitters finished on a Trace Thompson lead off double in the six. That's all Oral Hershiser right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's talk. Let's jinx it. Let's talk about the whole culture of it. And there it is. You're really putting us in a bad spot the next time a Dodger has one going because now it's our fault. <laughs> that the Dodgers were able to break it up. And like you said he can't have it both again, ways again. I don't believe in jinxes uh, now. Credit the trace for driving one of the opposite field. Either way, hit Dodgers finally lead off double. Now they got to do something with it. Now they have to see how they can produce a run. The Blue Jays did a good job when they got a lead off double, and that's was their only run by Kevin Pillar. And you had Russell Martin move him over. And you have here just the guy you'd like to try and get that job executed, Chase Otley. It was 0 for 1 today with the lone walk against Estrada. That came in the fourth inning when the Dodgers had runners at first and second with one gone. But Gonzalez and Grandal both struck out in that inning. Utley sends a fly ball to deep center field. Pilar's back on it, still going to the track to make the play, but it gets the job of advancing Thompson to third. Done. One away. Chase did his job, did a good job. Now it's up to Corey Seeger. We'll see what the. Jay's infield decides to do it looks like they're going to play in. And now it's up to Corey to find a way to get a find a hole or get a pitch he can handle and get it up in the air. And those holes get a lot bigger when the infield comes in like this. Corey is 0 for 2 today. Very aggressive swinger early in counts. Dave Roberts talked about that earlier this week that that seemingly is the first big picture adjustment the league is making against Corey Seager. Trying to get him to chase early in counts. And so it'll be the first big picture adjustment he has to make back. 
That was the pitch right there. The one he can handle fastball. It's kind of it was out over the plate on the outside, but it was as far as height was concerned. It was a height that you could get up in the air. Big pitch right here for Marco Estrada. They set outside and Seeger takes it away. It's a complete setup pitch. Throw it up in his eyes hard. Did not want that to be a strike at all. Is he going to go back there with the fastball? But the setup really is for the changeup. One two. Corey Seeger takes it upstairs again. Is he playing into that mindset of you want an elevated pitch? Well, right now, I think they need the strikeout and they want to save the shutout and the lead. So they are taking two pitches to set up. I would believe this has got to be a change up away. Breaking ball, swing and a miss, kicks away, but Martin's on top of it, and Thompson has to hold it third. Went to the breaking ball for strikeout number eight and a huge second out of the six. Uh, you set somebody up so they know what's coming but then you put it in a hard place to hit that would have been the change up or you set them up for the change up and you do something opposite and you completely fool them and they did that with the curveball. You know I st still would like to have seen I mean you're frustrated you didn't get the job done but once you see the ball kick around if Corey just runs the first maybe draw a throw you never know if Russell might throw it away but make them instead of just walking into the tag there with a runner on third base go to first to see if he can draw the throw so it's up to Turner it takes ball one Thompson started this inning with a double moved to third on Utley's fly out. And stands 90 feet away from tying this game. 1 0. Breaking ball is up. Turner goes ahead in the count, two and one. With Adrian Gonzalez do next. Dodgers trying to even the issue here in the sixth. Blue Jays run came in the third. Here's a two one from Estrada. Two balls and two strikes on that filthy change. Yeah, he said when we needed to get the runner over to third Chase Utley was the guy well with two out and you need a hit Justin Turner is the guy you want in the batter's box also. One of the highest batting averages in the big leagues over the last couple years. Another 2 2. What an eye from Turner to take it. Just an eyelash off the outside edge. You think how a fastball up and into a righty sets up a curveball? Well, a fastball up and away to a righty sets up the changeup. That's the same window as changeup could come out of. Then come back over the corner. So you could see right handed hitters chasing fastballs away with a strata on the mound because of so many change ups that he throws that break back over the plate from that area. Thompson at third in a one run game. Two gone in the six. Justin Turner on 3 2. Takes inside ball four. And the last two balls of that at bat missed by no more than a couple of inches from Estrada. 
is a big at bat. Justin Turner does not get a hit, but he does pass the baton, and he passes the baton with a outstanding quality professional at bat. He gets a hack here later in the count, takes his shot. It's a good foul ball down the first baseline, showing he's in on it. And then this last few pitches, as he continues to foul it off and spoil, he's in swing mode, but he's still making him throw him strikes before he swings. You mentioned passing the baton. He does so to Gonzalez, who promptly bangs it up the middle, but it's right to Tulowitzki down the inning. Dodgers waste a leadoff double and still trail 1-0. Hit for the Blue Jays. Don't miss the highly anticipated annual freeway series driven by Lexus when the Dodgers and Angels face off. May 16th and 17th at Dodgers Stadium. Go to Dodgers.com slash tickets. Ross Stripling with his best start perhaps since his first start where he took a no hitter into the eighth inning and in his major league debut. He's allowed just the double from Pilar, who came in to score the game's only run in the third inning. He's thrown 72 pitches. Chris Hatcher, though, starting to warm down in the Dodger bullpen. Stripling goes to work against Ryan Goins out of the nine spot. Drops one out of the sky for strike one. I appreciate all the congratulatory tweets I'm getting for <laughs> breaking up the no hitter but uh -huh. God's honest truth we had nothing to do with it. Yeah. It was Trace Thompson who did that. Yeah yes. great great job nice work you the man you you really did it way to go. <laughs> I'm like what. I think you're going to check baseball reference tomorrow and you're going to your headshot will have moved up one spot in the all time Dodger war leaderboard <laughs> from your contributions today. Goins brought in the only run of the day against Stripling with a bounce out in the third. Hit it on the ground to a drawn in Kendrick at first, who had to dive to his right to field it. And that kept him from having a chance to get Pilar at the plate. Stripling's 0 2. Right at Chase Utley. Well, this is the rough Stripling we saw in his first start. Both sides of the plate. Good sharp curve ball. Even when it's up, it breaks. The changeup locked in. Fastball up when necessary. Completely different than the few outings prior to this. And a bit like that rainy night in San Francisco. And the deepest. A no hitter any pitcher had taken in his debut since Boston's Billy Rohr went eight and two thirds and lost one in the ninth inning back in 1967. 
against the Yankees. Only guy ever to throw a no hitter in his debut game. 1892 Bumpus Jones which is a cool enough name that a lot of Dodger fans will remember it just from the connection to Stripling. He went on only to pitch seven more major league games did Jones. Wow. After throwing a no hitter in his debut. I wonder if he got hurt. They didn't really keep transaction records back then no, or right. TL records. Yeah. So I got to believe something happened to him. One and two on Michael Saunders. We're talking about Ross Stripling. Let's not forget, you know, this is what the opponent's batting average is a third time through the lineup. And you see that 364, talking about how well he's doing and talked about his first outing with that no hitter. So this is where he really needs to buckle down. Still hasn't allowed a run in the first two innings this season. Of those numbers as the game goes on go up and up 2 2 inside to Saunders with Donaldson do next. Eighty two pitches for the rookie Ross Stripling two years removed from Tommy John surgery. Came back last year in the minors. Making his big league debut this year. And Kendrick second guessing himself went for that ball at first and a nice job to recover and take the throw from Chase Utley. Yeah, that right there shows just from an experience standpoint when you're out there on a regular basis you know right away okay Chase has that I don't have to break I go straight to the bag still makes up for it. nothing wrong with that but I'm just that just shows the uh, the experience the lack of experience out there at first base when you're able to when you play there on a regular basis or wherever it is across the field you start recognizing people's ranges you understand the range you know the ball it becomes instinctive that's just a play that's going to happen when you have guys that are moving around a lot. Seven starts at second, six starts in left, four starts at third, but his first start at first this year. And the first one, as you saw a moment ago, since 2011 when he was with the Angels. Big part of the reason the Dodgers wanted to bring him back was the willingness that he expressed this offseason to play all over the field. Well, the way this roster is constructed. Josh Donaldson hits a rocket to third. Justin Turner makes the play to finish the inning. Wow, what a series it's been for Turner at the hot corner. And Ross Stripling has now retired 11 straight since Goins bounced in the only run of the game.
for this week. Why do they call it the hot corner? Because it's coming in hot. This one was scalded and Justin Turner flashed in the glove. It spins him around and then in control. Make a nice easy throw across the diamond as we had a look at the Morongo slow-mo cam. Now Smotty Grandall on the first pitch of the seven grounds out to first. Only one hit for the Dodgers against Marco Estrada. I think I'll get Donaldson's reaction. Yeah. Like, hey, nice play. <laughs> Respect from the MVP. That it is. What do you think of the hair, guys? I think you should try it. It's going to take me a while to grow up that long. And even longer to get it ready. I don't know if mine would fall that way, the way You're his right. does. Never know until you try, though, no, Mark. Uh, I'll try if you try. I'll watch you both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kendrick looks at a big breaking ball and quickly behind his strata, nothing in two. Now he is 0 for 2 today. And six hits on the road trip. Four of them came on Tuesday. Marco Estrada. Hey, Mark. One hit through six and a third. He's impressed, especially that last inning. You know, give up the no hitter, breaks up the no hitter, gives up a leadoff double, gets a man on third with less than two outs, and off of the glove of Smoke, race to the bag, won by Estrada. The moment the ball hits Smoke's glove, Estrada I think hesitates a little bit and then he's just glad he got there in time. He jumped. He's like jumping for him to get up and then he's like I got to get over there. Show some athleticism by Marco Estrada because right there usually a slight hesitation and then you see the speed and athleticism to get over there. Ninety nine pitches deep now. But I was saying I'm impressed with the sixth inning. This after giving that lead up double then you get a guy in scoring position the tying run over there and just he still was seemed like he was in control he did there was no panic in him and executed his pitches striking out Seeger granted Justin Turner we know how good of an RBI guy he was he wasn't really going to give in to him and then he gets Adrian Gonzalez. It's 100th pitch of this outing coming right here to Jock Peterson who has the ability to tie the game with one swing. Breaking ball hammered in the air to right sending Bautista back to the warning track and he's done it. This game is tied at one on Jock Peterson six of the season. Gets the breaking ball. We haven't seen too many mistakes by Marco Estrada in this game. Keeping the ball away. Look at Jock with the excitement. Absolutely. Finds the mistake. The breaking ball comes in and he did not miss it. Yesterday, we, Darwin Barney got an RBI off of Clayton Kershaw and yelled at our dugout. Well, that's from the wrong side of the diamond. But Jock, so excited when he hit that one, he yelled in the dugout to get the guys going. Carl Crawford on the ground base hit into right field so they have one hit through the first six and two thirds and now Peterson and Crawford go back to back against Estrada who is probably down to his final minutes of his outing. Well we saw Jock's reaction but watch Estrada he knew it because we, I was just talking about how controlled he's been in this game and in command and he knew it too he didn't even want to look at it. Just kind of that glancing that little peek over knowing like just give me the ball. Before that pitch, you remember Estrada ran over, had to sprint over because he was late to first. And Russell Martin, a great veteran move, went out there and delayed a little bit. They weren't doing, talking strategy for Jock. They were just letting him get his heartbeat down. And he hung that curveball. He wasn't quite ready to pitch because that was one of his biggest mistakes of the night. Trace Thompson bangs one to Donaldson, who spears it with a backhand to finish the inning. 
Brand new ball game thanks to that guy, Jock Peterson, with his second home run of the weekend and his third of this road trip, leading the club with six on the year. We are locked in one in Toronto. Day for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. Tied at one after the Jock Peterson solo home run against Marco Estrada. Now Chris Hatcher into the game replacing Ross Stripling, who is fantastic today. Hatcher, who is the eighth inning man to begin the season, no longer in that role. But pitching in an important spot here and trying to get some of that confidence back. Well, they're going to keep giving him the ball. He's got great potential to be the 18 inning guy. This is his 15th appearance, and that leads the club. Jose Bautista takes ball one. And what a greeting for him. Bautista, Encarnacion, back to back. Nobody's hit more home runs than Jose Bautista in the majors over the last six years. And in the last four years, Edwin Encarnacion is number two in baseball in homers and RBIs. Guys have said it a couple times this weekend. This is almost like an all-star lineup in Toronto. 1-1 one, one game in the seventh and a 2-0. He's green lighted I'll guarantee it. Make a good pitch don't worry about walking him. And he did great pitch. Stay there. The relievers they they just walk a tight rope. Almost like umpires when you don't hear about them. Yeah. On the ground to third Justin Turner's got it. For the first out, heck of a job by Hatcher after falling behind such a good hitter in Bautista 3 0 to get him to ground out. When Chris Hatcher has rough outings, it's more about counts, hitters' counts. And to yeah. come back from that 3 0, 3 1, great pitch. The reason it's about this hitter, I mean, they just eliminate it. You know, Hatcher likes his fast one, he's got a good one. And he also has a good breaking ball, but when you know as a hitter that he doesn't like throwing his breaking ball when he's behind in the count, you're like you can really gear up for that heater. Encarnacion takes upstairs ball one.
first Mother's Day for Chris's wife Jenny gave birth to Jensen Thomas Hatcher in early April. So happy Mother's Day Jenny and all the other moms out there. Bautista or Encarnacion yanks, yanks a liner to left that's pulled in by Crawford two away. I got, I got kind of tongue tied because I was getting excited to say happy Mother's Day to my mom. That's Boy. right. I was going to say the same thing. Happy Mother's Day mom. My mom. It's my grandmother. It's my lovely wife. So happy Mother's Day. So two up and two down for Hatcher here in the seventh. You guys must have had great moms because you both turned out really well. Oh, you're oh. you're a nice guy, Oral. Thank you and to right your mom you. for putting you two next to me. You're the best, my friend. Smoke is Cade both times today and takes ball one. You know, sometimes as athletes and quote unquote role models, we get complimented by fans of how nice we are to their kids or something that happened. And uh, my number one response is I had good parents. Mm. No question. My mom listens to just about every game. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of baseball. Right. She's tuned in just about every pitch. Two and one on smoke. She said, I, and I haven't told you this, Nomar. She'll love that I'm sharing this with you, but our first spring training game together, she said, the first time I heard Nomar talk, I thought, oh my gosh, that is like the most pleasant voice <laughs> I have ever heard. <laughs> I'm sure there's a bunch of fans going, are you? No, she's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> So really, my mom tunes in because she likes Nomar's no, voice. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll be over here if you need yeah. me. <laughs> mom she likes your voice too, Oral. <laughs> Her favorite part of the games, the opens when we're on camera. Or so she can see you. Yeah, she your likes boy. that part. Hatcher trying to work a one, two, three inning. But a base hit for Justin Smoke. Pretty good pitch. Fastball away. Smoke just does a nice job releasing the top hand, extending the swing, and lacing it out there in the outfield. But Chris Hatcher's job right now, 12 pitches into this inning. Nothing spirals out of control. Get right back in there, get ahead of the hitter. Troy Tulowitzki has not been the same guy so far this year. He's 0 for 2. You see the average. He has struggled ever since he came over in that deadline deal last year. Go ahead, run aboard for the Blue Jays in the seventh. And strike one to Tulowitzki. He's been an all star five times in the last six seasons. Ball with the Rockies. But hit only 239 after the trade last year. Missed more than a month with a cracked shoulder blade. And at 164 so far this year. 0 1. Ball one. No matter how much Tulo is struggling, Chris Hatcher doesn't remember the struggles. He remembers the great hitter he faced in Colorado. And for a pitcher, you have to erase that memory and know he's struggling and attack him. Grandall setting away for this 1 1. Left it over the plate and got away with it. Well, that's where you know he's struggling. Tulowitzki usually crushes that mistake right there. Once again, looking for the ball in the outer half. You see how Yasmani had to reach for that going on the inner half. 
And as a hitter, that's what frustrates you. That's what tells you you're struggling. It's not usually you're always looking and people will show the highlights you're struggling. It's maybe it's that third strike. It's that swing in the miss that's finishing off or you're popping up the ball or whatever. They don't recognize. They don't look at the balls like this that foul off that you should have usually crushed. And you only get one of the one, one or two and at bat in the big leagues. Hatcher trying to ensure that it's just one in this particular at bat. And a game tied at one after the Jock Peterson solo homer in the top of this inning. Must have been the sleeves. Here's a 2 2, and Tulowitzki leaves it up there. Count goes full, and so the go ahead run in the form of Justin Smoke will be off and moving with his pitch. The outfield really deep. Trying to do their best to keep the runner from first from scoring on a two out hit here from Tulowitzki. There goes Smoke. And there's ball four. So now you got to deal with a guy that won the game with a home run in the eighth inning on Friday night, Kevin Pillar. And has been dialed in over the last month or so. He had a three run homer against Joe Blanton to break a 2 2 tie in the eighth. Went down and got what was a pretty good pitch from Blanton. And just got it out of here. Well, even when we've got him out, he's barreled up a lot of balls. Hit the ball firmly, seems to be in time. Well, so far today, he's got that leadoff double back in the third and was the only run for the Blue Jays. And then his next at bat, he had a line drive to center field. So he's seen it well and squaring it up. Talk about him in the beginning of the series being that free swinger, but he's a free swinger that doesn't miss a whole lot. A former 32nd round pick of the Blue Jays, and he's turned into their starting center fielder with a gold glove caliber outfield performance last year and again so far this year. And that bat starting to heat up as well. Two on, two out, and a tie game in the seventh. Smoke the runner at second. Tulowitzki the runner at first. And Chris Hatcher delivers. Ball one. And Grandall out to talk with Hatcher, who got Bautista to ground out after falling behind in 3 0. And Carnacion ripped one, but it was right at Crawford and left. Smoke single. Tulowitzki walked. Osmani looks like he got hurt a little bit of that as we see JP Howell down there get loose. He yeah, has needed a little time right there to shake off the pain. Gets it right off the glove hand wrist. Just kind of hanging limp there. Remember, he took a foul ball earlier in this road trip. Off that same wrist and going great. Re aggravated again. Strike one on Pilar. That ball had a lot of movement. That was a great pitch. That slider, the bottom dropped out of it. And it was so tight, it could have been a split finger also. Look at the spin. I don't know. Huh. See Osmani's reaction? He had to snap the glove yeah. down to catch it. The 1 1 to Pilar. Base hit to right. That's the Thompson's arm. Never mind. And the Blue Jays take the lead in the seventh inning. Kevin Pilar has done it again, scoring smoke. Uh, Trace Thompson definitely, they weren't going to send him. They were holding him up because that ball got so. Got to Trace Thompson so quickly, he was in a good position to make a good throw. But the bobble out there cost them a run right here, and that's when they started to send Justin Smoke home. 
You see Justin Smoke right here. He's being held up by the third base coach. Stops. So a two out rally for the Blue Jays to retake the lead against Hatcher. And Russell Martin comes to the plate. Tell you what, Kevin Pilar, he's this year, he's fun to watch. He's an exciting player. What he does in center field. The way he handles the bat. Martin pops up. And it's Kendrick in foul ground and the inning. But the Blue Jays take the lead right back. A single, a walk, and another single, all with two outs against Chris Hatcher. They finish up this road trip today and then home for four with New York. Three with St. Louis. Let's check in with Alana Rizzo. Well, guys, Yasiel Puig getting a day off today. That's why Trace Thompson is in right field. Dave Roberts saying earlier today that he wanted Yasiel to be ready for the Mets series. He says it's just a day. He also said we have guys who need to play, meaning Trace Thompson. But Dave Roberts also earlier this week saying that he needs Yasiel Puig to be a bit more disciplined in the box. Feels like mechanically he's swinging at stuff that he shouldn't be swinging at, basically swinging at balls, not swinging at strikes. Doesn't necessarily have the patience that we saw from Yasiel just a couple of weeks ago. Go. All right, Chase Utley leads off this inning against Drew Storen, who delivers ball one. Storen is in, which means Estrada is out. Estrada goes seven innings, allows the one run on just three hits. The lone run coming on Jock Peterson's homer. One and one. Storen, you saw the numbers. This guy in his first season in Toronto has struggled mightily. It has not been pretty for him and he hasn't had very good command. He's made a lot of mistakes up in the strike zone. It's a guy who's used to success. And Osuna already warming down in the Blue Jays bullpen. He's been one of the lone bright spots and he has been a very nice bright spot. Perfect and save opportunities. He was unavailable on Friday night because of a strained groin. So Storen came out to try and save it and did, but struggled doing it. Drew Storen, 28 years old, out of Stanford. 
It's the 10th overall pick back in 2009 to the Nationals. Debuted one year later. Spent the first six years of his career with Washington. Came over in the offseason. Delivers 2 2. Utley takes it down and in, and it's 3 and 2. The beginning of the response right here. Chase building the count to 3 and 2 to the Jays taking the lead. He's trying to do his job to get some of the momentum back. And it's a leadoff walk. Tie and run reaches. And these fans restless already. They've seen this movie before with Storin. And again, Osuna warming in a hurry out there. You wonder how long it'll be before they go to him. Been a few days since he's pitched. So you know you can give him some relative length. So the Dodgers trying to pounce before they see Osuna. Corey Seager. Taking strike one. Corey's 0 for 3 today with a pair of K's against Marco Estrada. Two of the eight strikeouts Estrada had. 0 and 2. Looking at the Dodgers, this road trip, they've scored eight runs in the eighth and ninth inning in the last five games. Well, you remember the last road trip and the nice comeback in Colorado? Yeah. They won 12 to 10. They made that a happy flight. And it was after giving up five runs to give up the lead in the bottom of the eighth, and that was a similar play that allowed the lead. To be given up, Yasiel Puig overran a ball in right field. Blue Jays took the lead at the bottom of the seventh when Trace Thompson couldn't handle a hard hit ball. 0 2, upstairs. So hopefully there's more symmetry to this one. And that final game at Coors Field two weeks ago today. See if Corey Seager can drive a ball here on one two from Drew Storen. Breaking ball golf towards the right field corner. It's a fair ball and it bounces into the seats. The Blue Jays catch a break. It's a ground roll double and Chase Utley has to anchor at third but still nobody out against Storen and the Dodgers in business here in the eighth. Right when I saw that bounce over I was like oh. Because I think Chase Utley got a good jump off of first base and he was thinking I'm scoring on this ball all the way. That ball right there is what the outfielders on the Dodgers have told me about in the lobby of the hotel and on the bus that they were worried about line drives that off this turf bounce so high they're afraid when they charge a line drive it's going to bounce over their head. Corey Seager extracting a little redemption from the strikeout with a man on third in his last at bat. More of the same for Drew Storen. Justin Turner will come to the plate with a tying run at third, the go ahead run at second against Roberto Asuna.
by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. Roberto Osuna, the closer for the Blue Jays, the second youngest player in the majors. Only Nomar Mazar down in Texas is younger. He's 21 years old, just turned 21 a few months ago. And he's in a tough spot here with a tying run at third and a go ahead run at second, both reaching against Drew Storen. Osuna to face Justin Turner. Turner goes after the first pitch, strike one. Osuna's going to come at Justin Turner with a pretty good fastball, 92 to 95. He's got an outstanding changeup again. We're going to see that, and then a slurvy curveball. Infield playing halfway for the Blue Jays against Turner. It takes an outside corner strike. That one, that one's tough as a hitter because when you turn around like Justin Turner, you see the catcher. Watch how far he had to reach for this ball, and then to get the call. You're thinking he had to reach that far that it's a ball, but you see on Kazo and it hits. And I'm not saying that it's not a strike, but I'm just saying as a hitter, you get frustrated when you turn around and see that. Dodgers hitless in five ABs with runners in scoring position today. Doesn't necessarily take a hit here though with nobody out runners at second and third. Dustin Turner fouls it off on a pitch it was riding up on his hands at 96. I don't know how Justin Turner fouled that one off. That's one of those that you usually swing and miss underneath there the way that was riding in on him. Good job being getting eight. Getting a piece of it. Can take the lead with two outs, but it's hard when you're starting from an 0 2 count. Get an out to the right side, move the runner from second to third, get an out after that that sacrifices it in, and you're ahead. Dodgers right at 500 overall this season and on this road trip. One two to Turner. Osuna strikes him out. Credit to Chad Fairchild for not losing his cool there for sure. Appreciate the fact that he keeps Justin in the game. This game could end up in extra innings. And you're going to want his bat. And that reaction there of dropping the bat can sometimes get you kicked out right away. It looks good thing. I wonder if he would have if he would have left it there. You never know. Yeah. But he also pointed at it, and oftentimes they treat that as a fine for equipment or throwing equipment, which he might be reported for that. There's the way the umpire kind of points at it. So they're going to put Gonzalez on guys with first base open and take their chances with Yasmani Grandal. It's a birthday present to Agon that he doesn't want. He rather drove those runs in and had a more memorable 34th birthday. Well, we saw this move in the opener of this series backfire on the Dodgers with Kevin Pillar. Following up an intentional walk to Justin Smoke with a game winning eighth inning home run. See if the Dodgers can match him and make John Gibbons a scapegoat in the series finale. Hard to argue with walking Gonzalez though with the bases loaded. One out and a one run game. Grandall is 0 for 3. He is 1 for 10 on this trip, but he's off to a marvelous start this season. Ball one. Can an intentional walk also take a picture pitcher out of his rhythm sometimes? Sometimes. Throwing the four wide ones and all of a sudden now you got to get right back in there and it's bases loaded. Ah! 
He found it. <laughs> it didn't take long. Said he'd started with a walk from Chase Otley. Seeger then doubled. That chase drew Storin. Osuna, Cade Turner, walked Gonzalez, and delivers 1 1 to Grandall. 1 and 2. Randall just trying to find a way to put it in play against Osuna, who has K'd 14 batters in 13 innings this season and walked only two. In and out of the mitt of Martin, Randall stays alive. That's a good little piece right there. 95 now down to 82 with that changeup. Little tail on it, just a cup of the bat. Just barely touches it. You're alive. What does Grandall do with that new life? Bases loaded. One out in the eighth inning in a one-run game. Here's a one-two. Lays off. For an elevated fastball, two and two. Good job laying off that fastball. See, that was right when you're th area where you're thinking it's just a little bit borderline, where it's close. And when you're throwing that hard, the ball, when it's up in the zone, closer to your eyes, the ball has a tendency to look a little bigger, and you're in swing mode to try to catch up, and you swing and miss. Starting to zone him in. A good foul tip, a good take, and then another good foul ball. He's fouled off three two strike offerings. Utley at third, Seeger at second, Gonzalez at first. And Russell Martin will go out there to have a quick word with Osuna. Not sure we'd be able to read your lips through your mask, Russell. Glove up to the mask. Doubly sure. Just in case. Just in case, right? I'd, I'd watch for a reverse shift here. Russell maybe go sit in, and he really wants a fastball away. Just in case the Dodgers are relying locations. Here's a 2-2. In the air to center. This will get the job done. Pilar is back to make the catch. From third comes Utley. And this game is tied at two on a sacrifice fly from Yasmani Grandall. Well, Yasmani was battling this entire at bat, and he ends up winning this because all he needed was a sack fly, and he's happy about that pointing to the dugout because he gets the job done. And not only. Did he get the run in the tying run in but it was deep enough to allow Corey Seager the tag and get to third base and I love when they're able to get over there to third base granted there may be two outs but it also now it puts it in the back of the pitcher's mind and then the catcher's mind do I call that breaking ball for that possible ball in the dirt wild pitch to score the go ahead run run is charged to him Drew Storen and now soon faces Howie Kendrick. Who promptly puts the Dodgers in front with a base hit to right. Seeger's in from third on a two out single from Howie Kendrick. And how about the response from the Dodgers who now lead 3 2. Talked about it. They've scored eight runs going into this game. The last five games in the eighth or ninth inning combined. And they come through again. We were talking about Howie looking better at the plate. The swing path. The approach. The timing perfectly executed base hit to right field. 
So after the Blue Jays retake the lead in the bottom of the seventh inning, on a two out hit from Kevin Pilar, the Dodgers with two here in the eighth to jump in front for the first time today. And it's Howie Kendrick for the go ahead base hit. Jock Peterson now in his last trip to the plate, which was just last inning. He tied it at one with a homer. Ball one. And is now reached in 17 of his last 18 games. As soon as 1 0. Ball 2 to Jock. And you talk about this so often, Nomar, but especially against a lineup like the Blue Jays have that run at third and even the run at first, sure would be nice to have. Three and a, oh, two and one, high strike. <laughs> At this point, should probably wait a little longer. Well, it looked like it should have been three and zero. As he called the strike, he had a extra long look into the Dodger dugout, where he's no doubt starting to hear a thing or two. Right after we complimented them on uh, having such a good series, <laughs> we've jinxed more than the no hitter today. Swung himself out of his elbow guard. guard. Yeah. Everything was flying on that swing. His elbow guard, his front shoulder. <laughs> oh, soon to try to limit the damage. Two in the bank to put the Dodgers in front for the first time in this series finale. They set outside. And get Peterson with a fastball at 96. But the Dodgers take the lead on a base hit from Howie Kendrick onto the bottom of the eighth, 3 2. For the Dodgers, Trace Thompson flips sides of the field, goes over to left, replaces Carl Crawford. Takes a look at his cheat sheet. As Pedro Baez comes in. This has slowly become his eighth inning, and yesterday he came on and worked a one, two, three eighth inning. The young man who was signed out of the Dominican Republic, lucky for his 19th birthday, been in the Dodger organization since 2013. We've seen him here the last couple years, and he is starting to mature into a guy that they can count on. 
is Chris Hatcher to start the season in the eighth inning. And Blanton and Baez sharing the eighth inning role. Blanton taking the loss on Friday. Baez a one, two, three inning last night. And Ezekiel Carrera leading off this eighth inning. Pitch hitting for Ryan Goins, taking strike one. Dodgers will have to go through the heart of that Blue Jays order one more time to get the job done in this. And they're going to have to earn it. Baez starts out filling it up. Strike two. So important. That shutdown inning and also come out of that bullpen throwing strikes. The team's got some momentum and you continue it by attacking. Randall sets way outside and try to get him to chase one and two. 85 mile an hour two seamer out there just kind of completely changing the batter's eye. A total setup pitch for a high fastball in I would think. Looks like a good call. They left it out over the plate and Carrera followed it off. It's got a little leaky right there. You leak with your front side as a power right hander. Ball has a tendency to tail on you and doesn't ride true inside to the lefty. Saunders and Donaldson to follow in this eighth inning. The eighth inning prior to yesterday where the Dodgers had an ERA above seven on the season. Down among the worst in the majors. Strike three to Carrera to begin the eighth. And Baez has retired all four that he's faced this weekend. This one has a little tail, but he starts it far enough inside and throws it right at the armpits there. It's the perfect pitch. Now back to the top of the order, Michael Saunders. Gone deep four times this season. Blue Jays have hit more home runs than any team in baseball over the last week and a half or so. Chase is a changeup, strike one. The last one that I called at 85 and I called it a two seamer. It is his changeup now that he's throwing there, and that one was 87. That was outstanding. He can mix that in effectively with his Ooh. 97. And the little slider he's got. The same growth that we saw from Kenley Jansen as a guy who came up with just a cutter and he could be very successful with just the cutter as Kenley has gone to moving the cutter to the other side of the plate throwing a few more sliders throwing a four seamer and a two seamer every once in a while. We're seeing the same development here with Pedro. He's about a year behind Kenley. He struck out Carrera. And he misses outside to Saunders with ball one. We saw him throw a similar pitch to try and set Carrera up. And one good thing is getting ahead because now he has the confidence that he can throw the off speed with it, and mix him up to set up for his fastball, usually his go to pitch. Threw away to set him up to come back in. Two and two. That's a number one when he hits his spot and it's pretty good a number two when you knock a hitter down a little bit and loosen him up. Kelly Jansen threw yesterday it was a non save situation they had a four on lead. And he's beginning to warm here in the eighth. With the Dodgers in front three two. And a 2 2 to Saunders. That's a big time pitch. You're in a one run game. You're in the eighth inning. It's your new role. And you're going to what would be considered probably his third best pitch. And to bring those pitches along and to give young relievers confidence, you're looking for the right counts. But that was a very high leverage 2 2 count. You got to throw a really good pitch, and he did. 
You do not want to face Josh Donaldson with somebody on base. 2 2. And a full count. The guy's bringing a new pitch into the game, or it's his third best pitch. You can't expect it to be at a high ratio of strikes or great pitches, but good misses like that one keeps the ball back in your hand and situations the same. Reigning MVP waits on deck. Full count on Michael Saunders and a 3 2 lead in the eighth inning. Baez is ready. And a base hit to center. Sometimes you got to give the batter some credit too. Yeah, he earned Saunders, that. Saunders did, did a good job battling back, getting it back to 3 2, and taking that fastball right back up the middle. Josh Donaldson is 0 for 3 today, and the Dodgers have done a good job of holding him down in this series. 1 for 9. Number 2 in the American League with the nine home runs. 50 long balls since the beginning of last season to lead the to lead the majors. That is to lead the American League beg your pardon since the beginning of last season for Donaldson. Pedro Baez in a high pressure spot here in the eighth. Set for the 1 0. That one will get out of play. One ball, one strike. Josh Donaldson traded over from the Oakland A's. He's traded there for the Chicago Cubs who drafted him out of Auburn as a catcher. Transition to third base. He had a monster campaign last year to get that MVP at his first season in Toronto. Saunders off for first after the one out single. Baez to Donaldson with a 1 1 pitch. On the corner, strike two at 97. Back ahead in the count. Now you got two pitches after that excellent one to really put him away before you've got to challenge him. Bautista do next. Baez strikes out Donaldson for the second out of the eighth inning. Outstanding, amazing pitch right here to come back and dot that outside corner. A slider that was out there and then fastballs that are out there. Yasmani wanted a little higher, but you don't need it higher when it's at that velocity. Darwin Barney is going to pinch run for Michael Saunders at first. And they are going to go to Kenley Jansen to face Jose Bautista and to attempt to get a four out save. Dodgers by one in the eighth. Pedro Baez, good work. Jin into the game.
Well, you got to like the move from Dave Roberts here. Kenley Jansen attempts to go more than an inning for a save for the second time this season. Did it against Arizona on April 13th when an inning and two thirds. Here he comes on to face Jose Bautista representing the go ahead run with a tying run at first and two gone. Bautista's 0 for 3. World class power, though. Kenley, a pause that lasts forever and draws time. It's part of Kenley's game that is growing also. He'll quick pitch hitters. He can't do that right now with a man on first but when there's nobody on from the stretch sometimes he'll just bounce as he goes through his delivery and now Batista playing the same cat and mouse game stepping out of the box on him. Six home runs this year. Ball on up high. Jansen faced one batter in Tampa Bay over the first two games of this road trip and then pitched yesterday. And an on save situation. And so his first opportunity to get another save here on this road trip. Ten of them total. Went after a fastball that was above the letters, one and one. Uh, make no mistake, Jose Bautista isn't thinking about tying this game right here. He's thinking about putting them ahead. He's so he's going okay if there's a, a pitch that he thinks he can handle and he can hit a long way he's going to I think he's going to do it with two strikes and still keep the same approach. Of course he had that series winning home run against the Rangers last year in the American League DS. Made this place one of the loudest buildings you will ever hear. Kenley trying to keep him quiet with a runner at first and two gone. Here's his 1 1. Up high again, and he went after it again for strike two. Great read by Kenley and Yasmani. Seeing him attack the last fastball up. Well, if he's going to attack that, I have a lot of confidence that I can go back up there, and the worst thing he'll do is just foul it off. Soft line drive, diving play by Chase Utley. He came out of the middle of nowhere to make the catch to finish the eighth. He was headed to second with a runner moving and lays out to pull it in. Would have been a tough play on Seeger.
they hung on to a 3-2 advantage in the bottom of that inning. So on we go to the ninth. How about this play from Chase Utley? Laying out to make the play after he was headed to second to cover with the runner moving. Fully extended there to get to that soft liner. Hey, that was especially with the way that ball was hit, kind of jammed him. You don't know what kind of funny spin that might have had, so that may not have been an easy play for Corey Seager. Jesse Chavez is on, replacing Roberto Osuna. He's the fourth pitcher of the day for the Blue Jays and faces Yasiel Puig, who hits a base hit into right on his first swing of the night, uh, the afternoon. It's always nighttime in here. We came into the game replacing Carl Crawford last inning, at least on the lineup card. He came into right, and Trace Thompson moved from right to left with Crawford coming out. Chavez has been really good. This is his 12th appearance in a sub-2 ERA. Thompson one for three. Strike one. Thompson's lone hit broke up. Marco Estrada's no hitter. The lead off the sixth inning. It's an opposite field double. Trace has had some highs and some lows today with that breaking up the no hitter and then also bobbling the ball and getting an error in right. Allowed the Blue Jays to score a run. Breaking ball could be two. There's one. Thompson hustles out to beat it. Thompson has the speed. I mean, I think the high bounce right there where second baseman had to wait for it. Couldn't just charge that because it took a big bounce right off of his bat right in front of home plate. So he had to wait for the second big hop. And with that speed of Thompson and him hustling out of the box, keep out of the double play. And so with the fielder's choice, Chase Otley to the plate. Otley began last inning with the walk against Drew Storen, came in to score the tying run. Corey Seeger would follow with a double. Seeger scored the go ahead run on Howie Kendrick's base hit. Final game of this five game road trip. It's the third road trip of the year for the Dodgers. If they can hang on to this lead, they'll have had a winning record on all three trips. They would move to 5-0 in rubber games on the season. And they carry a, a winning streak into the homestand. They welcome in the Mets tomorrow for four. And the Cardinals for three. And the Angels for two at the start of the Freeway series before returning the favor the following two nights. Never takes a moment off. He is locked in and thinking baseball every moment. That's a base hit into center. Thompson holds on with Pilar's arm. And Chase Zotley is now hit safely in 10 consecutive road games. Two on and one out in the ninth. When we finish, it'll be back in the Sportsnet LA studios with Access Sportsnet Dodgers. Ned, Jerry, and John ready to take you through a review of this one. Of course, Alana Rizzo will be down in the clubhouse with reactions. Jesse Chavez will leave the game with two on and one out. Chad Gerardo comes in. Dodgers in front, 3 2.
streaming sports service delivering everything you've come to expect and more watch every out of market game live in HD it's the number one app for live baseball visit MLB TV for details. Chad Dorado side arming left hander from Mississippi State on to face Corey Seager with the Dodgers in front three two ninth inning. Trying to add on some insurance to help Kenley Jansen's cause. He'll face the middle third of the Blue Jays' order in the bottom of the ninth. I was talking about that earlier about what the Dodgers have done in the eighth inning or later on this road trip. They're going to try to make it hold here. And we always talk about those insurance runs. And with this lineup, with the Jays lineup, an insurance one would be huge. Corey had a big double in that two run rally last inning. Takes ball one. They're coming into the series, there's a really nice piece Ken Gurnick wrote on Dodgers.com about Corey's mom. And in honor of this Mother's Day weekend, his mom Jody, who he still sends flowers and chocolate covered strawberries to every, every Mother's Day. And of course, she is mom to three pros, not just Corey, but his older brothers Kyle and Justin. Kyle. Starting third baseman on the Mariners, Justin in the Mariners system. And he slices a base hit in the left field. Woodward giving the wave to Thompson, and Carrera's throw is late. It's an RBI single for Corey Seeger to give the Dodgers some insurance in the ninth inning. And on the throw, both he and Utley advance an extra 90. It really seems like Corey Seeger doesn't care which hand the pitcher throws with from the left side does a great job staying in there gets inside the ball and drives that line drive over there. Plate in that run and that's the insurance run the Dodgers need Kenley Jansen has been almost perfect this year but you like a little room to breathe. And guess what a pitching change. Dodgers up 4 to ninth inning back in a moment. They brought Gerardo on specifically for Seeger, and Seeger had a base hit to left to chase him, and here's the righty Floyd. Well, it's time to pile on. Good. Climbed back into this game, got back on top. Really looked like the Blue Jays, the way this game started and continued, that they were going to be the ones that are going to win it, but the Dodgers have some finish in them. And Corey Seeger's base hit to left was part of that. Trace Thompson scampered home with that fourth run.
Justin Turner. Over three today with a walk and a strikeout. Notley at third, Seeger at second, and the infield pulled in for the Blue Jays on ball one. Justin Turner, a very good hitter with runners in scoring position. And when asked last year about who the pressure's on, he goes, well, the pitcher's one of the jam. It's not pressure on me to drive the guy in. I'm just going to be as relaxed as possible and meet the ball. So many different ways that I can score him. It's a very good attitude, and it's a very good thought for all the youngsters back home too, playing baseball in a position there where they might feel that pressure. My team needs me. I've got to do this and you know, just be yourself. See the ball and hit it. And that swing right there is the one that gets the job done a lot of times. We we see him fooled but he's so relaxed and still tracking the ball that he's got enough swing left to just kind of serve it out to right field. One two again to Turner. And he lays off a sharp breaking pitch two and two. That's the amazing thing about Justin Turner and his, his hitting mechanics for me is he got the high leg kick. But he's in such good position and in balance that he doesn't commit until he reads the ball that he wants to swing at. Comes up and gets him and loads the bases. That's the other thing about those hitting mechanics. It's really hard to get out of the way when you're standing on one leg like a flamingo and all of a sudden you read balls coming at me. See how he has to get his front foot down before he can even try to get out of the way. They hit the back elbow. Yep. When his front foot is about six inches off the ground is when he realizes that ball's at me. It's the fifth time he's been hit this year which is the second most in the National League. Marte in Pittsburgh, Espinosa in Washington, the only guys with more. He's tied with Anthony Rizzo, who's another as a notable leg kick, making it hard to get out of the way. So they're loaded up for Adrian Gonzalez, trying to break this thing wide open. On his 34th birthday, he's 0 for 3 today. But he does have six hits on this road trip after the Homestand he'd rather forget or he went hitless. Did you guys hear or read that the salmon that he and Puig caught the other day, they had that cooked up for the team to have ready yesterday? Oh no. For the game? Nice. Yeah. Did they say it was good? I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it was, it was yeah. One and two on Adrian Gonzalez with the bases loaded in the ninth inning. Dodgers have scored the last three runs to take this lead. Start of the day a game out of first in the West behind the Giants. We'll play the finale with the Rockies in just a little bit and then welcome in these Blue Jays for a three game set starting tomorrow in San Francisco. Giants trying to sweep the Rockies. Right now sit in third. 
Arizona's down in fourth. Finally, a good start last night by Shelby Miller for the Diamondbacks, although ERA is still above seven. Zach Granke's ERA is still above five. The two guys they went and acquired to try and improve the starting rotation, which was the big issue a year ago, and they had a really potent offense. They still have that potent offense, but the pitching, despite those moves, has gotten worse. Two two to Gonzalez. Adrian Gonzalez doing a good job battling here, but being behind in the count. Let's see if he's able to do what he does best, just stay behind the ball, get one, and just kind of flare it out there. Yeah, you would think that he's in block the ball to left field mode. Got him swinging. Good battle, but Floyd eventually wins for the second out. When you're in that protect and going to left field mode as a left-handed hitter, there is a little down and in hole that it's created with your swing. And they were going for the back foot slider on Adrian, and he just missed it because that ball in that place was a little bit hung, really. It was hittable. Slow clap. Do it. Oral's got it going up here. It's game time, so game face from Nomar. No <laughs> slow clap. No. Randall tied the game last inning with a sacrifice fly. Really had to work to get that job done against Osuna. we gotten two strikes on him, and then he fouled off several pitches before he drove that one to deep center. Doesn't it seem like the uh, the go ahead run for the Blue Jays in the seventh was like two hours ago. <laughs> yes. The flow of the game seemed to hit a wall. Wow. That's where the slow clap is coming from. And that's what happened when the game hits a wall and people start doing silly stuff on a big league bench. Floyd trying to keep it right here and give his team a chance in the bottom of the ninth. Then Carnacion, Smoke, and Tulowitzki do up against Jansen. Got him. And so the Dodgers leave the bases loaded. Keep your fingers crossed that it doesn't come back to bite him. Fasten those seat belts. Kenley Jansen back out there to try and wrap up a series win.
trying to work multiple innings for a save for the second time this season. Did it against Arizona, the opener of the first home stand. And now here he is facing Encarnacion, smoking Tulowitzki with a two run lead in the ninth. A couple of Achilles' heel for short relievers that get saves when they come into big games that are blowouts, but they haven't worked in a while, and you usually see him give up runs, and then other times not feeling the adrenaline that they normally feel when they leave the gate coming in just for the ninth, already have pitched an out in the eighth. Well, it's a different rhythm for him as well. Not only did he get the out, but that was a long inning. Yeah. A long half inning. So he was sit sitting in there in the dugout, whereas compared to him maybe being in the bullpen and getting a routine of how he's going to get loose and then just coming in to throw. The eight warm up pitches between innings right here were very important for him. Pop up. Right side. This will be the first out of the ninth inning. Howie Kendrick. Kenley looking for his major league leading 11th save in as many tries. And it would draw him within eight of Eric Gagne's club record. Eric Gagne from Canada. Where he tries to get career save number 153 this afternoon. So he gets Encarnacion to pop out. Now it's Justin Smoke. Both those home runs came in one game on Tuesday when he tied the game in the ninth inning with a solo shot and then won the game in the 10th against Texas. Kenley pitched yesterday in the non save situation and it was only the. He's only had one save situation over the last two weeks. It's only his second. Attempt at a save in two weeks have been few and far between. And the Dodgers have dropped 8 of 11 coming into this game. And so not many opportunities for him. And the save chance in Tampa Bay was really untraditional though earlier on this series. Came on after Tampa Bay loaded the bases against somebody else. And it was a save situation by virtue of the tying run being in the on deck circle. Jansen to smoke with a one two. In the air to left Trace Thompson on the move lays out can't get it bounces into the seats. Ground rule double for smoke. And the Jays bring the tying run to the plate against Jansen. Well when you have a two run lead in the ninth inning. You got to go for it. You got to lay out and try to get it. If it's a one run. Get lead. And you don't know for sure, then you try to play it on the bounce and keep it to a single. But you got two runs, make every effort that you can. Great try by Trace Thompson. And so it's Troy Tulowitzki representing the tying run for the Blue Jays in the ninth inning. He's 0 for 2 today. He's hitting 164 this year, but has gone deep five times. Strike one. Smokes run not important. Man at the plate is everything for Jansen. And he delivers strike two. Nine times in Kenley's career. Out of those 152 saves, he's gone more than an inning. Once this year against the Diamondbacks. Here's the 0 2.
You know, in this situation, too, you got six, seven, and eight coming up. But six happens to be Troy Tulowitzki, and seven happens to be Kevin Pillar, who's been the hottest hitter they've had in this series. And then you got Russell Martin, who is struggling, but has a tendency to be clutch over the course of his career. So Kenley's got his work cut out for him, even with that two run pad. He doesn't have any adrenaline from sitting down. He better find it. Yeah. Well, it's there now. He was walking around the mound before the first pitch of this inning, kind of like a caged animal trying to get his heartbeat up, get his adrenaline going. It's going now. Another 0-2 to Tulowitzki. Flipped in the air to right. Yasiel Puig is there, and that's the second out. So he gets too low, and the Dodgers are out away from winning this series and having yet another winning road trip. But it is Kevin Pillar who grew up rooting for the Dodgers in Southern California and has owned them in this series. A game winning three run home run on Friday night. A double on yesterday. He's got a double and a single today. And could tie it with one swing. And that's the conference out there. You got first base open. We're not walking him, but we're going to pitch this guy very tough. Russell Martin behind him, struggling. Hot bat in the batter's box. Jansen against Pilar with a game on the line in the ninth inning. Cutter just misses ball one. You don't want to give him anything too good but you'd hate to put the go ahead run at the plate and the winning run at the plate. Somebody as clutch as Russell Martin has been throughout his career. You guys reference. There's a strike in a similar spot, but a different result. That was a good pitch right there by Kenley Jansen. The pitch before was a good pitch, and it was off, and this one definitely catches the corner. It's kind of an eerie feeling in here right now. I think the tempo of the game, the way it screeched to a halt, has kind of taken the, the juice out of a normally rocking building. The 1 1. Strike two, and Jansen and the Dodger, Dodgers one strike away. And after dropping the opener 5 2 on Friday with a three run homer in the eighth inning from the guy at the plate right now. They bounce back with a big performance from Kershaw yesterday to win 6 2. And in a game they trailed 1 0, then trailed 2 1. They lead 4 2. And a 1 2 from Jansen. The Dodgers take the rubber match and have another winning road trip. Kenley Jansen strikes out Kevin Pillar. And Howie Kendrick's base hit proves to be the winner in a 4 2 final in Toronto. Happy flight home. Well done by Ross Stripling to start and go toe to toe with an outstanding start from Estrada. And Kenley Jansen finished it off when the Dodger offense came through. Very impressed the way the Dodgers come back in the late inning. Seventh, eight, and nine, scoring their four runs, taking it to that bullpen over there in Toronto. Our Lexus play of the game was one that you, you may never see again. Our guy from second base dives in front of the shortstop on the left side of the infield. 